Thank you. Well, I uh, found it interesting, uh, even though Scott hasn't been introduced yet, his uh, bio is a little more traditional uh, than mine is, and he's actually probably a little more experimental and a radical than I am. But um, I could mention that um, I am poetry editor on 14 Hills. And what is 14 Hills? <laughs> what is 14 Hills? What is 14 Hills? <laughs> You're cutting into <laughs> my reading time. <laughs> it's San Francisco's graduate student literary journal, and we are about ready to release our next issue. And in um, honor of that, I want to dedicate this first poem to the editors. It's called Editor's Repose. Dead line. Past midnight, sleep fragile, rap radio revs away into the city. Siren spray, backup D. 2 a.m., new girl moves in. Upstairs, footsteps, track time. Dog coughs, cats rumble, ants invade, letters to go. Cold print, accept, decline, of home stairs, dark pupils. It's noon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'll get to the more serious stuff. This um, poem is uh, what I call a memoir poem from my youth in Alaska. It's called Diamond Willow. Diamond willow is actually any of the common willows that has been infested by a fungus that weakens the branches at their joints and they become brittle and break off. But at least the tree is stronger with these beautiful diamond-shaped scars. Diamond willow. It hid with its sores under bark rough with lichens, solitary and afflicted among the common willow, those gray whips crowding the banks of creeks that emptied into the lake, ready to lash my face if I ran by too close, too fast on snow-fixed trails. Distant were the first people I knew, the men who lived around the lake, far from cities, factories, wars, far from each other. Lean men spare a word in cash until mail day once a week at the post office, front porch of our house. Dog teams or boats tied up at the shore. The day given over to waiting, waiting for the mail plane, losing hours in hundred mile hops pots of coffee, and rounds of stories perked steady in the kitchen, sweaty with cigarette smoke, whiffs of urine off the fur of handmade parkas, or fish from gurry seeped into pants. They waited for Jensen's Weekly, an order from Sears, maybe a check from Sam Applebaum, a case of Pat's Blue Ribbon, Time Magazine, contact with the outside in packets and parcels. In the dream that is childhood, I weaved through willows and adults, unaware of the rot that broke off their branches and ate into the red heartwood, rhomboid scars that hardened the tree. Unaware, I too would become infected and would mourn for the bitter taste of willow in winter at the lake. When the cold grew so dark, heaven swallowed earth and stars burned out recesses of yearning for that serenity. This next poem, it's very short, it's called Arctic Style, it's after C.S. Giscombe, 
could just wrote a whole book called Prairie Style. Arctic Style. Approach the sphere smoke hole. Axis collapsed longitude. Distant the nearness. Snowball or fog. A self-aware minus presence. Outline the surface. Fickle ghost. The corpse as ice or stone. Erase stillness. Its rhythm. Footfall. A frugal thrum. And while we're on far away places, this next one on Khyber Pass is after viewing, looking with your eyes closed by Bashira Khan. And Khyber Pass, I think you know, is between Afghanistan and Pakistan, or at least currently it is. And it has been a place of much coming and going. On Khyber Pass, I roll up shadow into my torso when clouds clobber mountains and rain down empires, fragments stuck in my hair. The trill of a songbird clashes with the clang of church bells, hooves drum past where I stand, the organ turns sour. A writer dressed in red hat, long coat that ripples scarlet, bears down, his eyes closed. Now fly open, sightless, in this place of no borders. The horse begins to swerve. It reckons head on. A trick of light, or do I stumble by shade threading back into the ground? And to lighten the mood a little, <laughs> this one, a stew of hope. Perhaps I could have a conversation with my mother, now dead ten years, on a zero-gravity planet where the compass points north in the southern hemisphere. Perhaps after a dash from the salt shaker of mathematics, I could dance on air with two left feet of exuberance and not be dogged by the cat fatigue or daunted by the apple of melancholy. Perhaps a baby of joy will season a stew of hope and ladle up more than a thimble of satisfaction. And things will green on a fire chilled oak. <clears throat> Looking into water, I cannot see the bottom of this lake or find where the animal trails in the wilderness stop. I escape into the mysteries, the stars beyond the stars. But it is a dragonfly that hits the sun on water, and the pain of blindness that hobbles an eagle, while a turtle musters the strength of blood and crawls up a mountain for perspective a kaleidoscope at the speed of wind-driven clouds. Unwilling to hold your suffering or smell the dust stirred up by anxiety of permanence, I disappear, running to the ghost of a self who collides with the surface, white with flows blue with words. more. This one, without first sight. 
He becomes blind just when he learns to see. Turquoise streak through the rows of the western sky. A squirrel leap the distance at the snap of a branch to the next tree. And now he will never grasp the north country I left for him, nor how the rock soars behind my old house there. But should he go, he can smell the dead leaves after first frost and breathe the taste of salt morning wafts in from the bay. Before he loses presence in the heat of recriminations that crowd memory later to lie his head on our pillow where he knows it is me by how the flesh of thy finds anchorage against his and perhaps learns we exist at once in several places we never imagined. And now, the final poem. It is called, And Hillary Puts Down Her Bow. After a performance by violinist Hillary Hahn. The swish of wings on the Pacific Flyway, restless this time of year, brings a pair of golden crown sparrows exhausted to our patio in Oakland, where they gorge on grain I spoon out. Inside, you listen to Chapon Patita, which Hillary navigates through the reaches of her bow. This virtuoso, etheric daughter in this barrenness, articulates by finger but the tongue cannot. The wanton tamped down within your husk and touches the frequency that unfurls you. Your wings falter, but Hillary lifts you on, a quickening of notes that carries you over the gulf where there is no resting place. And when you slow, because you are tired, so tired, ready to welcome the waves. You glance at me and see I hear what you do. The birds repeat, return to flight, and Hillary puts down her bow. Thank you.